In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to turn objects that are lame to fame. Action! And viewers, nothing gets more lame than these two little red combs that I found in the studio. It's so lame that somebody left it behind. It could be from the makeup artist, it could be from the hairstylist, or it could be from the studio mascot latte's collection. I wouldn't know, judging at the size. And this is what I did. I just clamped them up in my boom arm that I used to hold my reflector. What I'm trying to achieve here is to make it less lame. Give it that dynamism in that angle. And here's what you should do. Go find something equally lame like this, but try to focus on something that's colorful and saturated like this. Let's go name our shots and set up our camera. You probably heard me use a new term on you, name your shorts. When I say name your shorts, I don't mean going to your camera and name the file name. What I'm trying to tell you as a good photographer, what you should do is you choose your ISO, your F value, your shutter speed, your point balance, name them first, and then add the lights and compose everything and take the shot exactly like how you name the shots. Kind of like playing pool, you name the pocket. So this is how my setting looks like. ISO 100, F16, shutter speed 200. And then what I do, head on to my white balance, go on Kelvin. You notice that I like to use a warmer color, 5260 on product shoots like this. And second thing, when it comes to the image control, since I'm shooting JPEG, go to your picture style and choose vivid. What I'm trying to do here is that the color is more saturated, the contrast is higher. So you can actually do this in standard if you want to. And don't forget to hit OK. Done. What's left now is to figure out what to do with the background because the subject is so lame. You know, whenever you get something lame like this, red in color, we're going to make the background a little bit more interesting. You know what's going to drive me crazy is that to light it up red because the subject is red and the background is red, that really requires skill to pull off. This is what I'm gonna teach you to do. Go to the angle that you're gonna see where the composition is. Take yourself a laser pointer or torchlight and then start pointing where do you think the light of the background is gonna be. Bear with me, you may be a little bit confused now. This is where I'm gonna hit it on the wall and that's the composition that will allow me to know where to hit the light for the background, that's it. So I'm gonna remember that dot on the wall there. Let's go to the background and add a red light to this. So I'm getting a hot shoe flash, set it to full power. How do I know it's full power? It's a meter away and I'm shooting an F16 and when you put on a red gel like this, it cuts away two stop. So there's no way it's gonna be half power, there's no way it's gonna be quarter power. So I'm gonna aim this at a zoom of 24 directly to the place where the laser pointer was pointing to. The whole idea is so that I can get the light even. If I point anywhere else or put the flash here, I may end up seeing the flash. So the laser pointer helped me to know where the center of that bright illumination pattern is gonna be. So I'm on 24 millimeter zoom, full power, and with the gel aimed there. So I'm a little bit low. This should be good. Let's go back to the camera now. This flash here is on manual power at the lowest power, 1 over 1, 2, 8. The purpose of this with this flash pointed to the back is just to trigger that flash that we have with the red gel on. It's not going to contribute any light. And I have a macro lens. You don't need to use a macro lens. Use any lens that you want because you're shooting at f16. So you don't have to worry about beautiful bokeh and background and all that. So what I do now, come down here. I'm going to focus here and normally what I do when I'm on a tripod like this, I will flip to manual focus after I pre-focus. That way it will not be hunting. Let's take a shot and see how our background looks like now. Why is my background not as saturated in red? Normally when I do shots like this, my red at the background is really... I know why. Overconfidence is going to be your biggest pro killer. So I was thinking it was a meter away and then I'm on F16, then I shine a very bright light. Wrong! Here's the logic. When your light is too bright, it's just going to be washed out. Bring this down by one stop. 
go 1 over 2 on a power of 1 over 4. You know what? I'm going to go 1 over 4 now. And not only that, I was casting a pattern too wide. Let's bring it to 50 now. More spotted. I'm going to do the same. Go to the front. Take a shot now. Look at this. So what do we learn from this? Number two, that's not a white wall you're trying to achieve. That is trying to get a saturated color wall. And the best way to do it is got to remain shadowy. Watch this tutorial that I did on YouTube not too long ago about how to get very colorful, saturated background. So that is done now. What is left now is to light up that two little coat. How do we do this? So I'm getting another hot shoe flash and I'm going to put the power at about 1 over 32, 1 over 16. I wouldn't know and I wouldn't care right now. And I'm putting the zoom at 105. Why am I doing this? My idea is that if I can light a light to these two combs and then make sure that it is not hard enough and still create shadow, that will separate it from the background. Watch this tutorial where I taught how to use highlight to craft and separate the background between a subject that wears a black jacket and a black background. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how you can use shadow to get a separation instead of just highlight. But the problem is that when I put a flash so small, so near, it's going to create a lot of hard light. That's not going to be very good. So get yourself a diffusion dome like this. This is mine. I just put this on. And then what I'm going to do is that I may need to vary the position and find out which one looks nice and create the most beautiful shadow. So the only way for me to do this effectively is to come to my camera now, flip this to timer. So I've got my camera on a five seconds single shot timer. Click here, come over here and let's try this. Take a look at the shot now. That looked not too bad. Look at this comb here. I love this fluid highlight here. I think it's a little bit underexposed, but I'm not going to worry about that. But what killed me is that so much of shadow is on the second comb. So that's why I'm going to do this a few different ways. How about this one? Ooh, this is really going somewhere. We can clearly see that the shadow at the edge of the comb is separating it from the red background. This is so interesting. The subject is red, the background is red, and still we can see separation and contrast. Maybe this is what I'm going to do now. At an angle like this. After a few attempts, I find that this is the best shot knowing where to put the flash at the front. Just remember this rule, make sure the flash at the front does not spill light into the background. This creates a beautiful amount of shadow to separate the combs away from the red background. They're both red, so this is quite difficult to do in any terms. So I decided to add two flashes at the front. One is the main light, the other one is the rim light, and this is what I got. Okay, don't stop with just two flashes at the front. Let's do something to the background now. So I got tired of holding two flashes, so I decided to mount one of the flashes up and then add on some gobo and flex to the background and see. These are the interesting photos that I got. Well, it may take a little bit trial and error with this one, but finally when you got it right, it's gonna create a beautiful gradient tone at the back. Well, not all the times you add gels and gobos and flag, they work. This looks like shit. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking now I don't have things that lame and beautiful in my house. Just try stuff like this. Viewers, I hope you enjoyed what you learned today. 
this has all got to do with interesting colors in photography. And that is why we have this new e-learning called e-learning in colors in photography. This e-learning is about to launch soon. Sign up now before the pre-launch offer is over because this is the pre-launch price you are enjoying now if you sign up today. And once we are fully launched, that will be the price. That's it. Please head on to my e-learning website, check out our e-learning and also the premium courses. You do not want to miss this. Every week we launch new topics on photography and they're all found in the premium courses. Not only that, I hope you support our YouTube exclusive membership where you enjoy exclusive content and also live streams, Q&As, photo CNCs. I'll see you soon. You know what I'm thinking to do? This thing is red and if I put a red background to this, I'm gonna kill myself, but if I pull this off, I'm gonna make lane too fade. Too, All right, too, too long. Too huh? long with your face. Okay, like, like this. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, wrong. Huh? One mm -hmm. more time. One more time. So sorry. <laughs> no, ah, uh, no, ah, uh, cannot, ah. Uh. No, then I should pair tear this off. I should tear this off. That one don't take, ah. Uh. This is okay. So, oh, this one is damn nice, man. This is very nice, right? There was a time, ah, uh, Ella say my photo nice one, you know. Now no more. Hi, how only? Really, ah. Uh?